Hello and welcome to a bit of Geek TV. Here's what you're in for. We'll start you off with our first impressions of the most anticipated board game of the year, Eclipse. Our newest friend, Todd Margaret, is an asshole. It's hilarious. It turns out that they made a book series out of HBO's A Game of Thrones called A Song of Ice and Fire and somehow managed to publish the books before the show was aired. We'll also peek behind the curtain of time in a throwback gaming session with Picross for the Nintendo DS. And finally, who can forget all of the excitement with Double Fine? Put on your hard hats and get ready to watch a bit of Geek. <laughs> During our three-day weekend, we had an opportunity to sit down with a brand new copy of Eclipse, and here's what we found. As far as we can tell from a single session, the game will easily stand up to the hype and provide a fantastic array of gamers the satisfaction they seek. It's a high caliber buy and it's easily worth the cost. I honestly can't wait for our next opportunity to play. Josh and Andrew got into a bit of a pickle at the end of our game when Andrew decided to kamikaze all of his ships into Josh's central territory during the final round of combat. Take a look. I've recently been introduced to an amazing array of TV shows, and today we're going to start with the most depressing of the bunch, the increasingly poor decisions of Todd Margaret. If any of you are fans of Arrested Development, and that should be everybody, you'll be happy to hear that David Cross and Will Arnett have teamed up to wreak havoc across your screen once again. The story focuses on Todd Margaret, played by Cross, who finds himself torn from his crappy mailroom job and thrown into the head of operations positions and overseas in jolly old London, England. While there, Cross's assignment is to introduce the newly acquired drink Thunder Muscle into every tea-drinking, queen-loving household. What follows is a series of tactless encounters, hopeless lies, and endless bouts of crappy luck that suck Todd Margaret and his company into a whirlwind of trouble. According to an interview with Cross, the show was pitched with a definite end, so we can rest assured that we'll see his antics come to a head. Each episode is roughly one day, which is a fun format and also drives the progression and evolution or regression and de-evolution of the characters. You can watch season one on Netflix instant streaming today and season two as it airs on IFC. There's no prolonging or stretching in this show. It's hearty content that's cringe-inducing, gasp-worthy, and exhaustingly hilarious through and through.
This last December, I was plopped down in front of the HBO series A Game of Thrones, and after being entrapped by the first episode, I unhinged my jaw and swallowed season one whole. I've read innumerable book threads thanks to my years of lurking on the Penny Arcade forums, and they all insist that the series A Song of Ice and Fire is something tremendous to behold. With the anticipation for season two ever growing within me like a cuddly little chest burster, I threw aside all other novels, short stories, personal relationships, and whatever. It was all gone, and Game of Thrones bubbled right to the top. I shredded through that first book and tasted its inky innards. These books are amazing modern-day Lord of the Rings. They may not be as high fantasy, but this is as prolific and well-written a fantasy series has been in a while. And let me tell you, I don't understand... Oh, shit. I understand, but don't care if some longtime fans of the series are miffed with newcomers for watching the show without reading the books first. The show caters to the obviously amazing story, has eye-crushing cinematography and acting, and it's the gateway drug back to the books. It's like HBO has an Oprah's book club that recommends titles I'll enjoy. This is one of those bandwagons that's true and honest, and everyone should make the jump on it. Don't believe me? Here's the trailer for season two. My brother left no true-born heirs. By right and birth and blood, I do this day lay claim to the Iron Throne of Westeros. Let all true men declare their loyalty. The Iron Throne is mine by right. They will bend the knee or I will destroy them. The cold winds are rising. I'm sure that if I'm diligent, I can finish the second book before season two starts, and then I can be excited and critical regarding their adaptations, even though there was almost nothing to complain about for the first season. There's just so much to look forward to, though. Sansa might grow a pair. Joffrey might get his. The Queen might lose a pair. Are you intrigued? Check it out. Already seen the show? Already read the books? Loan them to friends. Don't shoot up your fantasy magic on your own. Make sure this title gets the coverage it deserves. After a rousing holiday season of weird gaming news, we've decided to crack into my vault of gaming experience to ensure that you're all aware of the awesome, mind-melting game that is Picross for the Nintendo DS. I first picked up this bad boy shortly after it came out in 2007 and proceeded to play it endlessly, attacking each new level with the ferocity of a rabid meerkat. Initially, the playstyle was extremely challenging because it was unlike any puzzle game I had ever played. But after the first introductory stages, the challenges hinged less on my confusion and more on the honest complexity of the puzzles. For those unfamiliar, Picross is a grid puzzle game, not unlike Sudoku, where the player has to uncover a super pixelated picture. Each column and row has numbers, and the player has to use good old math, logic, deduction, guessing to figure out which blocks the grid needs to be filled in to produce the hidden image. If you can't seem to understand any anything I'm saying, you'll have to pick up a copy and figure it out via trial and error, just like the Pilgrims did. When friends respond to this suggestion with contorted faces of bewilderment, the best thing I can do is hand them a copy. You really just have to play to get the hang of it. It's incredibly fun and worth any level of initial frustration. If you're a fan of puzzle games, then you should own this one already. Go get a copy for yourself. You can find it online for about $20. In fantastic and inspiring game news, fans have come together to make a dream project happen. Tim Schafer, head of Double Fine Studios and more, created a Kickstarter page for a brand new point-and-click adventure game. The gaming community is in need of clever and insightful adventure games, and Tim Schafer and crew have the experience necessary. This is evidenced by titles such as Day of the Tentacle, Psychonauts, Full Throttle, and Grim Fandango, to name a few. Hopefully this will inspire future game makers to realize they won't have to spend excessive amounts of time under the oppressive rule of publishers. That they too, after 20 plus years of game design experience, may be able to publish something on their own. Seeing as the Kickstarter goal of 400000 was absolutely immolated and only continues to writhe and burn, I am anxious to see what brilliant new game will come out of the flames. While on that note, rumors have been going around that when Schaefer talked to Notch recently about Psychonauts 2, Schaefer mentioned Double Fine would need to at least match the budget of the first game, roughly $13 million, to which Notch replied, yeah, I can do that. 
This has been just a sliver of the news we've got our eyes on. If there's something you think we should cover, or if you want to let us know how much you love the show, hit us up on Twitter at A Bit of Geek, or drop some love in the comments section below. I'll see you all on the next episode of A Bit of Geek TV.